Henrietta Swan Leavitt was an American astronomer who discovered the relation between the luminosity and the period of Cepheid variable stars. A graduate of Radcliffe College, Leavitt started working at the Harvard College Observatory as a computer in 1893, examining photographic plates in order to measure and catalogue the brightness of the stars. Though she received little recognition in her lifetime, it was her discovery that first allowed astronomers to measure the distance between the Earth and faraway galaxies. She explained her discovery, a straight line can readily be drawn among each of the two series of points corresponding to maxima and minima, thus showing that there is a simple relation between the brightness of the variables and their periods. After Levitt's death, Edwin Hubble used the luminosity period relation for Cepheids together with spectral shifts first measured by fellow astronomer Vesto Slipher at Lowell Observatory to determine that the universe is expanding, see Hubble's law. Early Years and Education Henrietta Swan Levitt, the daughter of Congregational Church Minister George Roswell Levitt and his wife Henrietta Swan, Kendrick, was born in Lancaster, Massachusetts, a descendant of Deacon John Levitt an English Puritan tailor, who settled in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in the early 17th century. The family name was spelled Levitt in early Massachusetts records. She attended Oberlin College and graduated from Radcliffe College, then called the Society for the Collegiate Instruction for Women, with a bachelor's degree in 1892. She studied a broad curriculum including classical Greek, fine arts, philosophy, analytic geometry, and calculus. It wasn't until her fourth year of college that Levitt took a course in astronomy, in which she earned an on dash. She then traveled in America and in Europe, during which time she lost her hearing. Career In 1893, she obtained credits toward a graduate degree in astronomy for work done at the Harvard College Observatory, she never completed the degree. It was at the Harvard College Observatory that Levitt began working as one of the women human computers hired by Edward Charles Pickering to measure and catalogue the brightness of stars as they appeared in the observatory's photographic plate collection. In the early 1900s, women were not allowed to operate telescopes. Because Levitt had independent means, Pickering initially did not have to pay her. Later, she received 30 cents an hour for her work. She was reportedly hard-working, serious-minded, little given to frivolous pursuits and selflessly devoted to her family, her church, and her career. Pickering assigned Levitt to study variable stars, whose luminosity varies over time. According to science writer Jeremy Bernstein, variable stars had been of interest for years, but when she was studying those plates, I doubt Pickering thought she would make a significant discovery and dash, one that would eventually change astronomy. Levitt noted thousands of variable stars in images of the Magellanic Clouds. In 1908 she published her results in the Annals of the Astronomical Observatory of Harvard College, noting that a few of the variables showed a pattern, brighter ones appeared to have longer periods. After further study, she confirmed in 1912 that the Cepheid variables with greater intrinsic luminosity did have longer periods, and that the relationship was quite close and predictable. Henrietta Swan Levitt working at her desk in the Harvard College Observatory Levitt used the simplifying assumption that all of the Cepheids within each Magellanic cloud were at approximately the same distances from Earth, so that their intrinsic brightness could be deduced from their apparent brightness, as measured from the photographic plates, and from the distance to each of the clouds. Since the variables are probably at nearly the same distance from the Earth, their periods are apparently associated with their actual emission of light, as determined by their mass, density, and surface brightness. Her discovery, which she produced from studying some 1,777 variable stars recorded on Harvard's photographic plates, is known as the period luminosity relationship or Levitt's law. The logarithm of the period is linearly and directly related to the logarithm of the star's average intrinsic optical luminosity, which is the amount of power radiated by the star in the visible spectrum. In Levitt's words, a straight line can be readily drawn among each of the two series of points corresponding to maxima and minima, thus showing that there is a simple relation between the brightness of the Cepheid variables and their periods. Levitt also developed and continued to refine the Harvard standard for photographic measurements, 
a logarithmic scale that orders stars by brightness over 17 magnitudes. She initially analyzed 299 plates from 13 telescopes to construct her scale, which was accepted by the International Committee of Photographic Magnitudes in 1913. Influence The period luminosity relationship for Cepheids made them the first standard candle in astronomy, allowing scientists to compute the distances to galaxies too remote for stellar parallax observations to be useful. One year after Levitt reported her results, Eginar Hertzsprung determined the distance of several Cepheids in the Milky Way, and with this calibration the distance to any Cepheid could be accurately determined. Cepheids were soon detected in other galaxies, such as Andromeda, notably by Edwin Hubble in 1923 and 24, and they became an important part of the evidence that spiral nebulae are actually independent galaxies located far outside of our own Milky Way. Thus, Levitt's discovery would forever change our picture of the universe, as it prompted Harlow Shapley to move our Sun from the center of the galaxy in the Great Debate and Edwin Hubble to move our galaxy from the center of the universe. The accomplishments of the American astronomer Edwin Hubble, who established that the universe is expanding, were also made possible by Levitt's groundbreaking research. If Henrietta Levitt had provided the key to determine the size of the cosmos, then it was Edwin Powell Hubble who inserted it in the lock and provided the observations that allowed it to be turned, wrote David H. and Matthew D. H. Clark in their book Measuring the Cosmos. To his credit, Hubble himself often said that Levitt deserved the Nobel Prize for her work. Gosta Mittag-Leffler of the Swedish Academy of Sciences tried to nominate her for that prize in 1924, only to learn that she had died of cancer three years earlier. The Nobel Prize is not awarded posthumously, though she was paid only $10.50 per week, her discovery of a way to accurately measure distances on an intergalactic scale paved the way for modern astronomy's understanding of the structure and scale of the universe. Illness and Death Levitt worked sporadically during her time at Harvard, often sidelined by health problems and family obligations. An illness contracted after her graduation from Radcliffe College rendered her increasingly deaf. In 1921, when Harlow Shapley took over as director of the observatory, Levitt was made head of stellar photometry. By the end of that year she had succumbed to cancer, and was buried in the Levitt family plot at Cambridge Cemetery in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Sitting at the top of a gentle hill, writes George Johnson in his biography of Levitt, the spot is marked by a tall hexagonal monument, on top of which, cradled on a draped marble pedestal, sits a globe. Her uncle Erasmus Darwin Levitt and his family are also buried there, along with other Levitts. A plaque memorializing Henrietta and her two siblings Myra and Roswell is mounted on one side of the monument. Nearby are the graves of Henry and William James. There is no epitaph at the grave site memorializing Henrietta Levitt's achievements in astronomy. Levitt was a member of Phi Beta Kappa, the American Association of University Women, the American Astronomical and Astrophysical Society, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and an honorary member of the American Association of Variable Star Observers. Her early death was seen as a tragedy by her colleagues for reasons that went beyond her scientific achievements. In an obituary her colleague, Solon I. Bailey, noted that she had the happy faculty of appreciating all that was worthy and lovable in others, and was possessed of a nature so full of sunshine that, to her, all of life became beautiful and full of meaning. Books and Plays Lauren Gunderson wrote a play, Silent Sky, which followed Levitt's journey from her acceptance at Harvard to her death. George Johnson wrote a biography, Miss Levitt's Stars, which showcases the triumphs of women's progress in science through the story of Henrietta Swan Levitt. Robert Burley wrote the biography Look Up, Henrietta Levitt, pioneering woman astronomer for a younger audience. It is ideal for four to eight-year-olds.